Well, good evening, friends. Thanks for tuning in once again to Knock EPC. Uh, this is our kind of pre prayer meeting uh, address, and this evening we're looking at yet another psalm. And I trust we'll find it uh, just so very, very relevant uh, for us, as indeed every page of scripture is. Um, and I trust it will prepare us uh, for prayer once again. This is Psalm 62. Psalm 62. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defence. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. See that. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defence. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth to God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. Amen. Psalm 62, uh, a psalm of uh, David. Uh, it splits into uh, three uh, stanzas, uh, verses 1 to 4, then 5 to 8, then 9 to 12. And we have those sealers, those pauses in between. Uh, breaking it up for us. Uh, in verses 1 to 4, we have David's waiting. David's waiting. Truly my soul silently waits for God. And in verses 1 and 2, we have silent confidence in the Lord. It's personal for David. He is saved. He has salvation. My salvation. And it comes from God there in verse 1. From him comes my salvation. It's from God. And yet at the same time in verse 2, he alone, that is God alone, is my rock and my salvation. He is my defence. I shall not be greatly moved. Of course, we see uh, traces of the Trinity here, don't we? We have uh, salvation coming from God, and yet it is God at the same time. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God himself comes in human flesh. Uh, and so David is confident in God. He is saved. His salvation comes from God, and God is his salvation. Silent confidence. But notice there in 3 and 4, we have a similar context to what we have in our world today. Um, we could say with David's son Solomon, you know, nothing new under the sun. Uh, look at verses 3 and 4 there. How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from the high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouths and they curse inwardly. And we have this, don't we? Uh, very much at the moment, this is what is in vogue. Attacks on those in authority. It's a trendy thing. 
attack uh, the, the police. We see it uh, in so many different places now. Um, but it's all double-tongued. Uh, they're blessing and then yet there's cursing. There's there's lies being told. Uh, and those who are, who are doing this, those who are uh, seeking to bring down authority, well, really, they're described here in the scriptures as, as a leaning wall, a tottering fence. Yes, they can reach high, but actually they're reaching too high. They don't have their own authority. They don't have substance. There's no big foundation. It's just popular opinion and it's popular today and not tomorrow. And so it's not stable. It's tottering. And they will fall. God will bring justice. God will do it. And David waits then silently for God to do it. He waits on God. He waits on him. You know, we, we need to pray for wisdom, don't we? Uh, when to speak and when not to speak. Uh, especially with the whole social media thing which has taken off. We, we need to pray for much wisdom. There are times when we must speak. And there are times when we would be better being silent. Let's pray for that wisdom. That we as God's people would, would wait silently when we ought to. And speak up when we ought to. Above all, we need the wisdom to look to the Lord as the only source of salvation. Uh, it's not about, you know, going through all the archives of old films and footage and so on and you know, saying we'll never watch that again, we'll never do this. Um, it's not about pulling statues down and trying to change some history or whitewash things or say that's enough of that. Maybe some of those things have their place perhaps. But salvation will only come from one source. It's only going to come from the Lord. It's only from the Lord Jesus Christ. Only Jesus is the answer to sin only Jesus is the one true and ultimate authority to which every knee will, in fact, bow. He's the one we must be looking to. David was looking to him. And here he says he was waiting silently. Sometimes we've just got to wait. David's waiting, verses 1 to 4. Verses 5 to 8, we have David's witness. Listen to him. Listen to his witness in verses 5 to 8. It's, it's mostly meditation. He lets us into his own thinking. Again, don't people do this? Uh, you know, what, what's on your mind? Well, you, you put it on your Facebook post or you make a little TikTok video or wherever it might be. But you put your thoughts out there. It's, it's very much what people do today. It's right here. Here's the thoughts of David. Well, my soul wait silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defence. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Yes, he's talking to himself. These are his thoughts. Uh, but they're put out there. They're, they're broadcast. They're published. He, he wants others to know uh, the way he is thinking. And as he talks to himself, really, he's saying, keep on waiting. And keep on expecting. It's an expectant waiting. It's not waiting for another disaster to fall. No, he's waiting for God to intervene. And he remembers. That's the big thing. He remembers. He deliberately remembers the Lord. He's my rock. He's my salvation. He's my glory. He's my strength. He's my refuge. And he wants others to know this. That's where his hope is. He remembers it. He calls it to mind deliberately. It's the Lord. That's who he is thinking, meditating about. Listen to his witness. But then he goes from meditation to message in verse 8. And the message is, trust in him at all times, you people. You trust him too. I trust him, says David. You've got to trust him. You can trust him. Put your faith in the Lord. Trust in him. Trust in him all the time. What does that look like, David? Pour out your heart before him. 
come to him and talk to him. He's willing to hear you. He will listen to you. He will answer you. Yes, pour out your heart before him. You know, that, that's our privilege tonight as we come to prayer. Uh, we get to pour out our hearts unto the Lord. Pour it out to him tonight, please. Why? You know, it tells us that God is a refuge for us. And the us, of course, is God's people. It's the church. Not a refuge for everyone, will he, no way? But he is a refuge for his own people. Come to the Lord and in him you will have that strong tower, that refuge, one you can run to. And believe me, this is our privilege. We get to come to him again and again and again. We get to draw aside from the attacks and all the other affairs that are happening in this world. We get to come and wait and pour out our hearts before the Lord Almighty. David's waiting, David's witness. And then finally, verses 9 to 12, David's warning. His warning. Um, and really, it's a warning about power. Uh, because we tend to look to uh, power for the answer. Uh, you know, we're maybe waiting for uh, an update from Downing Street because there, there's power there. We want to hear what's being said there. Maybe we're waiting for an announcement from Stormont uh, because there's power there. We want to hear what things are actually going to happen next. Uh, it's where we sort of naturally look to. But there's a warning uh, about power. Surely men of low degree are a vapour. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapour. They're, they're contrasted, the high and the low. Uh, and really, you know, when you add them together, they're, they're, they're nothing. The low, they're, they're, they're a vapour. The high, they're a lie. So, so don't, don't be looking to them, you know, for the ultimate answer. Don't be looking to them for salvation. Because it's not to be found there. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. Yes, don't trust in being high so that you can trample on people and, you know, exert your power. Why, why, why would you do that? Uh, if riches increase. How wise the scriptures are. There are those who are in authority, yes. It's always been the way. And they're there for the money. It's always been the way. And what about the low? Well, in the in the grand scheme of things, they're, they're exactly the same. They can't have, you know, power to oppress people to get money from them. They have to use robbery instead. But they're using whatever power they have to get rich, thinking that's the answer. But power is not the answer, and getting rich is not the answer. Do not set your heart on them. If riches increase, don't, don't set your heart on that. Your heart will still be restless until it finds its rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the power of men, whether they be high or low, comes to nothing. But God has spoken once, twice I, I have heard this, verse 11, that power belongs to God. See, his power means everything. And it means everything to everybody. Because we will all answer to him. For you render to each one according to his work. At the end of verse 12. We will all stand before him. And give an account with what we have done. Uh, with the life he has given to us. There is power in God. That's where all power comes from. Every other power and authority it is delegated from on high. He's the one who sets rulers up and he takes them down again. And David's warning is, look to the Lord. Because these other powers that come and go, yes, they are ordained by God. But in terms of you being saved, these powers, they mean nothing. They may bring you riches. They may bring you nothing. But don't look to them. 
But there is real power in God. Power belongs to him. It's almighty power. And we're doomed when we stand before him. Ah, but. Ah, but. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. And there's Christ once again in the psalm. Uh, he is indeed the, the mercy of God come from heaven in the flesh. And the warning is, of course, you know, don't miss him. Don't miss God's mercy in Christ. Don't forsake your salvation. Heed the warning from David. In Christ there is power and mercy. Flee to him again tonight. Listen to David's witness. Listen as he remembers my rock, my salvation, my glory, my strength, my refuge. Trusting in his saviour. The message is trust in him too. And all the while he's waiting. Yes, the world of his day is exactly the same as our world today when it really comes down to it. There's this anti-authority stuff going on right there with David. And they are overreaching themselves. And David, even David, he has a silent confidence in the Lord. Oh, please have that silent confidence even now in the Lord. And yes, please do break that silence and pray. Pray to heaven that he would show us more of his mercy. And these days when things are uh, somewhat falling apart, we look to him. We have confidence in him because he has all power. All power. Nothing is out of his control. And even better than that, he's got mercy. Mercy we need. And mercy this world needs. So let's pray please to that end. Amen.